Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to Bar Run Forge. Uh, Bar Run Farm today. We just got a phone call that our chicks have arrived. So we're going to go to the post office and pick up some chicks. Never thought I'd say that on a Wednesday morning. Anyway, stick around. Well, the time has arrived. Uh, we've made some decisions here on the farm. Uh, we raised the 32 uh, chicks in the corn crib, and uh, we've had some pretty good success out of those. We, out of the 32, uh, we processed 12 of those uh, for our own personal use, and we're just kind of going through the process. It's been a long time here on Bar Run Farm since we processed uh, chickens for ourselves. And so we were just kind of easing back into that. Uh, after discussion with everybody, we've kind of decided to go ahead and begin that process on a regular basis. We're going to be uh, putting meat in our freezer. The purpose of this is not a production uh, for business. Maybe not as of yet. At some point in time, maybe we will do that. We're gonna actually, um, pasture these chicks. So we ordered uh, these chicks from a place out in Missouri. I'll put a link down in the description, maybe up there or up there, and uh, and show where we got this from if we had good success with this. Uh, these chicks came from Missouri. We ordered them, I ordered them Monday morning uh, and said that today was their hatch day and they would be here by Thursday. Wednesday morning, post office called me and said, your chicks are here. So here they are. Uh, they came in this box. Uh, they seem to be pretty happy. I haven't opened the box yet up. Uh, where we're gonna put them is in our original chicken coop where the nesting area was. We've actually been able to close that off and we've brooded chickens in here before. We have essentially turned this into a brooder. Uh, I have the heating pad in here as well as a lamp. Uh, we're going to try to keep an eye on the temperature in here. I've got it bedded down. I've got the water in there. Everything was ready for them when they got here. Uh, so I'm going to open this up. We'll put the chicks in here. And then we'll take you through this whole process of uh, pasture, uh, pasturing some broiler chickens. These are Jumbo Cornish Cross. Uh, these will be about eight, maybe nine weeks before processing. And uh, so I'm kind of excited about this, this process, if this works out. Uh, I think maybe we'll do this on a, on another uh, scale, so to speak. And uh, there will be a video coming up of building a chicken tractor. We don't have one, so we've got to build one. So let's put these chicks in here and uh, get them uh, kind of accustomed to their new environment. First thing I'm going to do, I'll uh, open this up. And you can see we've got them bedded down, uh, ready to go. So I'll, I'll probably have to adjust the, uh, the feeder and the waterer. Uh, they've got a, a nice waterer in here already. So I, I'll introduce them to that. As each one comes out, I'll actually take them over to the waterer and uh, give them a little taste of that water. And, uh, and then over to the feed as well. So let's open this up and see what we got. And hopefully we don't have any mortality. That's one of the things that we're always concerned about, about getting chicks. It's still kind of a crazy thing to me to, to order chickens by mail being sent in the post office. Everybody looks good, so that is a good sign. So what I'm going to do is gently pick up a chick. And we ordered all males. And the main reason for that is just to get them uh, as much size as possible. Again, I'll take a, a chick, take them over to the water, give them a little taste of that water, set them over here by their buddies. Oh yeah, he was excited about that. So we ordered 20. We'll see how this goes. And we'll just go through the process of putting them in here. Oh, you little stinker.
Well, I got them set in here. I gave them all a drink of water. I had to close the other side because they were uh, they were literally jumping out of the coop. So uh, they're already in here working around. Uh, I may have to lower the feeder just a little bit just to get them some feed. But I've seen some of them already get to the water. And they look pretty active. There's a couple of them that are a little sluggish. I may have to encourage them in here uh, towards the feed and the water. Um, it is still plenty warm. It's in the 80s right now. Not terribly warm. But the good thing about it is with the lamp and the heating pad in there, uh, I don't think we're going to have an issue with heat. Uh, tonight's going to get probably down into the 60s. That's as far as it's going to get. That's not bad. Uh, but they'll have a tendency to huddle towards uh, the heat. I've got the light over there as well, so they'll want to be in that area also. So we'll see how they do. I'll keep an eye on them throughout the day today and, and each and every day. And then we'll go through the process of what uh, what comes next for for our chicks here. So you may be asking, why all of a sudden all the chicks, all the chickens? Well, we have tried to make an effort uh, now for a little while to be, I don't want to say prepping, because we've avoided that term uh, whole hog. I had no pun intended. But we've wanted to be more self-sufficient and years ago here on the farm you know we we took care of our own vegetables and um, we had some of our own meat production here i mean used to, we used to raise 300 feeder hogs not that we ate those though a lot of those just went straight to the market and we raised sheep uh, we have 100 100 ewes or so uh, so we've had dairy cattle we've had beef cattle we've had hogs in production uh, not just personal use and basically just because of the way things have been of late and uh, prices of things things like that uh, kind of an inability to depend on resources from outside um, we've just made an effort to try to be more self-sufficient self-reliant now not completely I mean we still go to the grocery store on a regular basis we eat grocery store food um, we just want to not be kind of caught but at the same time, we know the value and the quality of having your own food. For those of you who have done that, you understand when you eat a homegrown chicken or a homegrown vegetable, there is a distinct difference in flavor and, and confidence and everything about it. Uh, it's just better. And if you've got the ground, you've got the land to do it, why not? So we started with the the 10 chicks from tractor supply uh, with the intent to have some egg layers <laughs> we started with 10 uh, 10 made to full maturity and to egg laying and then we've actually lost three we've had some infection issue due to hen pecking and we didn't catch one of them in time the other uh, it was just it just happens um, so mortality is kind of a part of the part of the game so we're we have seven of those original uh, and we have one that's not laying right now and we're going to try to get her healed and separated uh, so she can lay again uh, so anyway we started with that and then at some point in time I, we were at tractor supply and we've got a video out on this um, we got a, a deal we couldn't refuse on chickens and I thought, okay well we'll just get these and some of them will replace our egg layers with and some of them will um, will process and so we have done that I didn't have a place to go with them I built the other hen house added on to the original coop so things have just kind of progressed and we've tried to do it slowly uh, you know we've got the the greenhouse uh, we started with the raised beds in the feed tubs uh, so we, you know we're just kind of making steps and strides to to be more self-sufficient the chicks are a portion of that. These chicks right now, uh, there's 20 of them, and they're gonna help feed two homes, uh, technically three, but that's the process. And, and we're gonna start this way. We've got some areas that we don't like to mow and like in our garden patch that needs some fertilization, and pasture chicken seems to be the way to go. We chose Cornish Cross because it's a quick turnaround and they produce a lot of meat. I know there are some people who are not big fans of Cornish Cross. 
you know, it's like everything else. If you have uh, thoughts and opinions on stuff, you're welcome to it. Um, just don't denigrate somebody else for making certain choices. We went with the Cornish Cross simply because of simplicity and production and, and the turnaround time. It does, just doesn't cost us as much, and we're trying to watch our costs as well. You know, we've got these chickens in here. Uh, we had a, a corn uh, grain bin that wasn't being used. We had 32 chicks. We needed a place to go with them. So we did just minimal conversion to this. You know, we added the watering system, things like that. And uh, now they're laying. And we recently made some uh, nesting boxes for them in there that are mobile. And I'll show them to you on maybe on another video. But, you know, this is what we're doing. Um, I, have, <laughs> I have done a full-blown dairy. Uh, essentially uh, with with kids help and a little bit of help here and there but uh, a full-blown dairy operation dairy cattle operation wintering cattle uh, going out when it's below zero to bring cattle in to milk at four o'clock in the morning and again in the evening um, my life is such that I'm not ready to winter animals right now other than the simplistic ones and so we've got things pretty well set up to where wintering these animals is not that big a chore. Um, I just am not prepared for that and don't want to do that. Uh, we're considering some other animals to pasture in our actual pasture out near the pickle patch next spring and that will be it. They will be pasture for uh, market. That's it. That's all they're going to do. They're going to pasture. We'll put some mineral out for them. A uh, little bit of grain maybe. Uh, but their job is to clean up pasture and produce meat and go on to the market. That is the reality of things and that's how things work. So that's what I'm kind of pushing towards. You know, next spring if this works out and the chicken tractor situation and the pasture, pasturing of chickens is good, we will probably do that again. And who knows, uh, if this is something that kind of encourages us uh, toward helping out you know we've tried to diversify things here on the farm to where uh, we're not dependent upon for many years we just did soybeans or wheat and soybeans and so you're depending on the one crop to come in you know we've diversified here on the farm to add more hay ground uh, in areas that were difficult to to do row crops uh, we went back to raising corn um, and out of marketing that I think that's going to work out to help us market that. We've got some other ideas to help out with diversifying our crop. Uh, we've added forages, we've added different crops to raise, we've added uh, chickens to our to our own personal use. Um, we're making uh, inroads to do some pastured four-legged animals. Uh, it's for, just simply for marketing. So there's a lot of stuff going on uh, here on Bar Run Farm and we're just trying to make things um, number one, easier, more productive, and uh, really to be more self-reliant and to take care of uh, things here. You know, we've been here for 100 and about 120 years, and uh, we want to keep it that way. We want to keep things progressing and uh, kind of honor those that have gone on before us. So anyway, before I just start rambling on on a, on a Troy's tirade there for a minute, we do want to thank you guys for coming in. This has been a, a great time. It's kind of a humid uh, day here on the farm and uh, I've just uh, I got to get inside I'm sweating like a maniac right now but I'm happy about having these little chicks we're gonna stick with this all the way through we'll show you on a regular basis we'll give you updates on how the chickens go maybe we'll just do it kind of a time lapse maybe not on a weekly basis or whatever but we'll just kind of go through the whole process of pasturing uh, these jumbo Cornish cross uh, so anyway, thanks again, guys. Thanks every time you join us. God bless, and we'll see you on the next one. Take care.